Thank you, Kyle. Oh. T-shirts look nice and soft. Uh, I don't know if Brett and Red said this tonight, but I believe this is a Socially Conscious Night tonight, which is an event you guys run once a year. Yeah, so this is our third annual Tech for Good Night. Tech which for Good. We're excited to have. And we don't have Tech for Bad Night, but you know, we could always add that. That could be Halloween next year. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Tech for Good Night, uh, it's going to get heavy in a moment before it gets nicer, but I promise you'll leave this with a smile. Uh, I'm really excited to announce this project. It's very near and dear to me, and we are Quickwick, and we are trying to end the scourge of malnutrition for the nation's youngest and most vulnerable children. So there is a picture of a child who's hungry in the next slide. I'm warning you, but there's only one of them. So only one picture. Only one picture in the deck. Okay, so real talk for a moment here, Seattle. Uh, the Great Recession of 2008 has lifted. Seattle is booming. We are prosperous. But the reality is we've discovered there's a large section of jobs, uh, be they in industry, blue-collar jobs that have left this country and are not coming back. And the reality is there's a large swath of Americans that are left behind or left without work. And today, the actual the numbers for hunger in America are growing, which is distressing. And right now, one in five children, which is crazy, one in five live in food insecure households, which means they don't always know where they're going to find their next meal. Uh, that comes to 16 million children. And that's a real problem. Uh, for us as a nation because we're trying to build citizens and at the same time scientists are starting to tell us that from the ages zero to five form a really critical period for growth and development in children. Uh, there's some stats. They say in the first year of life 60% of all the nutrition you consume go to your brain. Within the first three years on this planet 80% uh, of all the synaptic connections in your brain are formed. So this is really important. This is about preparing kids for kindergarten, preparing kids to succeed. So the good news is, for those of you engineers, we just took 16 million children. We've reduced the scope. We now have 8 million uh, children, infants from 0 to 5. We can focus on, cut the scope of the problem in two uh, by half. Uh, but you're probably thinking now, how are five programmers in Ballard going to look after feeding 8 million infants? And the good news here again, um, there's a lot of buttons on this. The good news here, again, is that we're actually not alone in this mission. There's actually a federal government agency that's tasked with exactly that, with providing supplemental nutrition for low-income families across America. Uh, who here has heard of WIC? Wow, awesome. That's great. Does anybody know anybody on WIC? Or That's terrific, terrific. So WIC is a program that uh, provides supplemental nutrition for low-income pregnant mothers, nursing mothers, children up to the age of five, uh, and it's across the nation. It has 9 million users. It gives out over $9 billion in benefits, and it's a terrific program. Uh, in a nutshell, for those of you who can see the screen, uh, sorry to people who are behind the pillars, this is sort of what WIC looks like. This is about half the package that a family of four would get per month, and it's about delivering these supplemental foods. Mothers come into a clinic, they meet with a nutritionist who uh, measures their demonstrated need and assigns these vouchers. The problem is the vouchers. This is actually the voucher from the state of Washington. From this small slip of paper, the mothers and participants on this program are expected to ascertain what brands they can purchase, what foods are approved, and what quantity they have remaining. Needless to say, it's very confusing, and if there's any misuse, the result can be very humiliating. You hold up the line in the supermarket, you're identified as a welfare recipient, and it can be a scary process. So uh, there's no animations. Uh, these are, all three of our, these are all three of our charts here. Um, there's this, there's this, the net result, the consequence of all this going on is that while the poverty, the number of people in poverty are uh, growing in our country, uh, millennial mothers are turning away from this program. They're saying this is too confusing to use and we're not willing to put up with this. So WIC enrollees are declining at rapid rates. Um, but we also know as tech entrepreneurs that the penetration of smartphones, particularly in this low income segment, has just absolutely exploded. So he said, given this phone that everyone, this computer everyone carries in our pocket, how can we begin to solve the program, problems facing the WIC program? And we created Quick WIC, and our concept is to automate and simplify the delivery of WIC benefits onto the mobile phone. Uh, it sounds pretty simple when you see it. It took us a while to get here, but we have, here's three of our basic features. We want to do real-time benefits, so you can check your balance from any store, anywhere, anytime, and see exactly what you have left to purchase. And with visual clues to help you understand it if English isn't your first language. 
We can use the camera on the phone as a barcode scanner, which is a really cool way to instantly verify if any product in any store is available to you. Uh, and we're currently looking on doing uh, live text support with people uh, who work in the clinics. So we're rolling out our pilot right now uh, to Chickasaw Nation, which is a small WIC community in Oklahoma. Uh, they have 4,000 users. And if anyone has any technology questions about how we went about building this, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, that's it. Time's up. Yes? Who are you selling to? Are you selling to the government as a better way to facilitate this? Or? Yeah, so right now we're trying to sell the state agencies. There's, there's 90 different organizations that put together WIC. It's all 50 states, territories, and a lot of Native American tribes. And we're pitching to them. We're saying this is, this is going to be the, first, the new front end for your clinic experience. And reception to that is slow but increasing. I know you guys are curious. Yes? So, do a lot of people in poverty have smartphones? Yeah, so the amazing thing, we actually pivoted into this company from trying to do bill payments on our phones. And we discovered that, you know, you think of the smartphone as a luxury item a lot of times, but uh, today the case is you can go into Metro PCS or something and get a, a phone for free. Uh, and it's become, well, it's maybe your second or third device. It's become the primary device for households that don't own laptops, that don't have broadband connections, uh, and it's widespread. Thanks, though. Yes, back corner. Yeah, so this, is, this has been our biggest challenge to date, is that our, we're trying to sell to these government agencies. And the sales cycle for our first client was a year long. Uh, there's not a lot of early adopters, oftentimes in government, but we've been to a few conferences, and we keep hitting them over the head with this, and everyone says, hey, I'm getting 20-year-old mothers right now, and they, don't, they glaze over when I talk to them, but they're on their phones all the time. What can we do? And we're hoping that people will start figuring this out as an answer. Yes? Um, conceivably, the, the biggest area where WIC concerns the retailers is that the uh, concept they call lane flow, which is just getting customers in and out quickly. WIC is a major source of disruption. Um, but we haven't found a way to either partner with or potentially monetize the retailers yet. You know, they say, how many users do you have? They say, 4,000 Oklahoma. They say, you know, talk to us in a year. Uh, yeah. Uh, we've we built everything entirely in house, and uh, we've been on the road or on the phone talking to the basically departments of public health at the 50 states. Oh, uh, no, we actually uh, will need help with translations fairly soon. We've done Spanish, and uh, you know s the Seattle local area has some 11 active languages that the WIC supports, and so we'll need help with that. Yes. Uh, so we're, we're doing our pilot right now and gaining the users, the families in there. When we go to spread to other markets, we're going to need to sign a deal with that local government before we can get their users. Thank you, Max. Thanks, guys.